Joe Burrow is doing fashion in France. Justin Jefferson is becoming a jet, and the Paris Olympics are trying to pull a fast one. Plus, we'll give a tasteful and restrained review of the new Netflix series about the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Yay. Welcome to Shut Up Football. I'm Jeff Stoltzfus, that's Kevin, and when it comes to the NFL, this is Barely News. This summer, the Olympics are being held in Paris, France, a fact I generally do not care about. I couldn't name one event. Jousting, maybe? For me, it's the Winter Olympics or nothing. I like curling, a sport that you could do drunk and still make the podium. I mean, probably not gold, but at least bronze. Well, this year, the Summer Olympics did in fact wake me from my apathetic slumber under a pile of old newspapers, but it's not because of the events. It's their mascot. And the mascot for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games has just been unveiled. In French, it's called Les Friges. Look at it. Does that not look familiar to you? They made a mascot of herpes, and that is unacceptable. Copyright infringement, because the now defunct Philadelphia Stars mascot blob was clearly the inspiration here. In a sad attempt to avoid litigation, France is claiming their mascot was based on a hat? Really? That sounds more believable than an STD. If that's how you want to play it, France, fine. We're sending in the best lawyers Philadelphia has. The filmmaking process requires multiple takes from a multitude of angles and frame sizes. So what does an actor do when they're required to eat during a scene? Bring us some food. They use the spit bucket. After every take, they had a spit bucket. If you notice, look, the prop person's running in and he's spitting it out. But that wasn't the case during a State Farm commercial featuring Andy Reid. And I made a pact to myself just being a cheeseburger connoisseur that I wouldn't use the spit bucket. But after about the 60th cheeseburger, I had to go there. Yeah, I had to go there. 60 cheeseburgers? That's like half a cow. Pat's sitting right in front of me. And so I'm trying to do this and there's cheeseburgers flying everywhere. Reid has a famously large heart, but now I'm just thinking it's engorged. Mm. Explain it again with those nuggies. For those of you that thought that the UFL was a useless path to nowheresville, you're wrong, sucker. Now that the UFL season is over, multiple UFL players have earned NFL contracts. Currently, 17 players have gotten workouts with NFL teams, and eight have been signed. Michigan Panthers kicker Jake Bates has seemingly been the prize of the UFL since back in week one, when he nailed a 64-yard field goal to win the game. He finished the season with three 60-plus yard field goals. He's now officially a Detroit Lion. Other notable additions include running back Ricky Person to the Seattle Seahawks and Jacob Sailors to the New York Giants. Linebacker Willie Harvey Jr. signed with the Cowboys, which makes sense after they lost linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch. Sure, they sort of addressed that in the draft, but did they? Harvey led the UFL with 76 tackles. He previously spent some time with the Browns. In fact, the Cowboys have snatched a few UFLers. They grabbed former first-round pick cornerback Garen Conley. Conley hasn't played in the NFL since 2019. The Cowboys previously took spring league players Cavante Turpin and kicker Brandon Aubrey. Few of these might actually make a regular season roster, but it's good news for the UFL to show it can be a legitimate pathway to the NFL. Some still need development coming out of college, but some just need more film. What's it like to watch Joe Burrow seemingly play chess? Joe Burrow was spotted playing chess in France. <laughs> Burrow is an avid chess player. It's said he keeps a chessboard in his locker and plays with himself. Wait, what? I mean against himself. You know what I mean. But he didn't go to France just to play the game of kings with some cheese-eating surrender monkeys. He was there for the Vogue fashion show in Paris. There, he was joined by Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. Burrow wore this bold suit with no back. I don't know a lot about fashion, but that ain't done. It looks like he has a very recent tale to tell about an unexpected crocodile. The backless satin lapel suit was designed by Peter Dew. Or Doe, or don't, I don't know. Business in the front, party in the back, that's a fashion mullet. I didn't know France had a Florida. Burrow said, I love clothes, but I've never really understood the industry. It's very simple. What do you not get, Joe? 
Hey, if you like football content and shenanigans, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can even do it out of spite. Teach me a lesson. <laughs> Joke's on them. I refuse to learn. <laughs> the Minnesota Vikings have a major problem on their hands. JJ meet JJ meet JJ meet JJ. <laughs> Too many damn JJs. Luckily, Justin Jefferson had a solution. I'm just, I'm just from now on, man. You can't call me JJ anymore. And I definitely don't like Justin, so. Jets. Because it turns out you can just call yourself whatever. Nobody gives a shit. Jet sounds like he should be part of a Jason Statham crew plotting a heist. Yeah, that's our wheel man, Jets. He's a simple lad who likes airplanes and applesauce. Good thinking, Jets. There's definitely nothing else in the NFL with that name already. This allows McCarthy to be the one true JJ. I'm nine from now on. No, 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 no. Somebody has to be JJ in this. You can't both drop JJ. I mean, what would TJ say? This was literally the only solution to this problem. If only the J's were short for something. Kansas City and Hallmark are collaborating with the NFL and Skydance Sports to make a holiday movie. Holiday Touchdown, a Chiefs love story. Yes, give the people what they want. The movie will star Tyler Hines, seen here just hanging on the beach at midnight with a toothpick, not giving a fuck, and Hunter King, who's one of these women. I wanna say the one on the, you know what, nobody cares. Oh, and Ed Bagley Jr who most likely plays at least one of the character's fathers and maybe dies. Don't you legally have to become a senior at some point? He's too old to be a junior. Oh, that's Ed Bangley Sr.? Nice teeth, brosive. Tell a joke, I could see him from space. What was I talking about? Oh, so according to IMDb, this is the logline. A diehard Kansas City Chiefs fan and her family are competing to win the team's Fan of the Year contest in a process judged by the director of fan engagement, Derek. Fantastic. You know what? Let me take a pass at this. In a world, basic bitch Alana or something needs to win the Chiefs Fan of the Year contest before the bomb and her father explodes. What she doesn't know, director of fan engagement fucking Derek can't let her win because sparks fly when they fall in love for no reason and oh yeah, it's Christmas. Set against the seductive backdrop that is Missouri. <laughs> Movies are easy. If you haven't seen Gardner Minshew's Raiders photos, you're in for a treat. Minshew went full Uncle Rico and a collection of other poses that are Minshew-esque. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's the stuff right there. The Cowboys cheerleaders have come to Netflix with America's Sweethearts, a behind-the-scenes docu-series. It's basically the old CMT show, Making the Team. After 16 seasons of giving Cowboys fans something to masturbate to, CMT dumped the show. And like any good venereal disease, Netflix picked it up. Except it's a new creative team making it, so it's different maybe? It's directed by Greg Whiteley, who created Cheer and Last Chance You. It's an intimate look at cheerleaders farting on their moms. Uh-oh. I got a tube. No, don't. <laughs> Oh, God! Asking the hard questions. What's your opinion of artificial intelligence? So what do you think is the best thing for everybody in here to eat? What's Maybe our I'm average short. belly button to about two and a half? I'm not a professional, but that's too many belly buttons. She looks like a million bucks. I'm like, girl. Because then, you know, one year it's you're too heavy, the next year it's you're too thin. I know. It's a hard world. Girl, you ain't gotta tell me. Kelly is from New Jersey, Becca is from Mississippi, yeah. and Charlie is from California. <laughs> Wait, they're not even from Texas? That is some grade A bullshit. It's hard knocks for cheerleaders, truly. Complete with cut downs, heartfelt backstories, and high kicks that ultimately end when 36 menstrual cycles sync up. Yay. The show discusses cheerleader pay. How much are you making as a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader? I would say I'm making like a Chick-fil-A worker. It's less prestigious to work at a Chick-fil-A, but there's just as much emphasis on breasts. Rim shots. They're not paid a lot. According to Charlotte Jones, it's not about the money. It's about the privilege of getting groped and stalked, both of which happened last season and are addressed in the show. To be honest, I'm not really into cheerleaders. Wake me when they make a Naughty Librarian series. <laughs> it's a well-made show. I always appreciate behind-the-curtain looks at how things get made. And don't even get me started on that goddamn dishwasher. This is my new dishwasher. That I'm kind of proud of. Normal, heated dry. 
Throughout the series, you'll learn other superfluous facts about the Cowboys and AT&T Stadium. We hope the Guinness Book of World Records for TVs in a venue at over 3,500. We have TVs in elevators. We have TVs in the bathrooms. The Cowboys season always ends in the shitter. Might as well be on a big screen. God loves Dallas. God loves Dallas Cowboys. Come on. God might love the Dallas Cowboys, but last season he had money on the Green Bay Packers. And it's up and good. Yay. Thank you so much for watching Shut Up Football. We do appreciate it. Say out of your mom for me. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. It sound right, boy.